Okay, so thanks to Geekon for sending me this Mini Air 12 to test. It is a super small mini PC with a very power efficient N100 processor in it, but it's also got really good connectivity on it. So we've got USB-C on the front and also USB-A, obviously power and headphone jack. A Kensington dock on the side. And then on the back, we have three monitor outputs and I'll be testing that later on in the video. So one is via the USB-C display port. We've got another display port connection and an HDMI. Another couple of USB-A connections on the back, Ethernet, and obviously this is power. According to Lilliputing, you can power it by the USB-C as well. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to their test. Uh, we've also got a full-size SD card slot as well, but it is super compact and really nice looking, very quiet in operation. And as I said before, uses very little power. So in the box, I had a load of screws to be able to attach it to the back of a monitor, which I'll also try in a minute. Uh, this plate to put it on the back of a monitor, full-size HDMI cable, and a nice compact power adapter. Quite a few PCs or mini PCs come with quite a big brick, but because this is a very low power device, that's all it needs. But the barrel jack is a decent size, so it's not going to break off very easily. So let's show some of the cool setups that you can do with this. And I'm going to use my Ymaxit monitor for this. So this is basically a portable 14 inch monitor uh, and we can open it up and we can prop it up like this. But you can also just use it as a tablet. It's all magnetic so this comes off. But let's pop it in this style for the moment and let's use a USB-C cable that's capable of display. So I'm going to plug that into the USB-C socket on the back and then I'm going to plug another USB-C into the monitor. So you can see I now have a Windows tablet. Yes, it's plugged in, but I have a Windows tablet. Uh, I'm not sure if the keyboard will come up. Yes, it does. So I can log in, hit enter, and I have Windows 11. And we can call up the web browser and obviously move around, uh, pinch to zoom. So it works just like a tablet. So this would be really good for like commercial applications where you need a touch screen and uh, you, know, you want it powered. You don't want to have to rely with it on batteries. I think it's a really nice way of using this and quite unusual for this sort of mini PC to have this USB display port. This is another setup uh, basically in portrait mode using the same monitor, same single cable to the monitor, but I've also plugged in a mouse and keyboard as well. So uh, I can use it like that. It's on a flexible monitor arm. So again, for, for some tight spaces, some use cases, this would be really handy. And this super neat setup is using very little power. So we're currently consuming 14 watts playing a 4K YouTube video. So on the back of my LG monitor, I've got Visa ports here and you can see that these all line up. So I've taken off the base to have a look inside before I attach it to my monitor. So I've got a single stick of 16 gig of RAM and I've also got a 512 gig NVMe drive as well inside, which is nice. Let's pop this back on. So let's screw this on the back here and pop these two in which have spaces on them. Yeah, that's slotted in place. So I'm using a short HDMI which I already had. Power for the monitor and power for the mini PC. Obviously I could tidy that cabling up and we're up and running. I might need to change the angle because the sun has just started streaming in creating this natural lens flare. There you go, one super cool all-in-one PC at a budget price using your existing monitor. Right, before I test some games and emulation, let's have a look at the three monitor setup on it. Okay, so monitor setup. So I've got two 1080 monitors here, and also behind them is a 4K TV, uh, and this is a motorized desk, so I can basically lower it down. But let's address the cabling. So first of all, we've got an HDMI cable, which is gonna go into here. Uh, we have another HDMI cable, but I'm going to use that with a DisplayPort adapter. So basically plug that in and plug that in. And I've just managed to switch on the PC by accident. Uh, and also I'm going to use the USB-C adapter. This is the sort of thing you would use with a USB-C Android phone or the new iPhone or iPad Pro to HDMI. So I can plug in my TV 
and let's spin this around because this is a short cable and it's going through my capture device. And I haven't plugged these in uh, already, so I'll just show you how easy it is to configure multi monitors on Windows. And let's just log in. Okay, so we have three monitors already, but let's see how they're configured. So at the moment, the mouse is on this screen. If I go to the right, it goes to this one. Okay, so it's completely wrong at the moment, uh, which is fine because obviously, how is it going to know? So if we right click on the desktop and do display settings and you can identify which monitor is which so you can see three is going to be on the left uh, one is going to be above yeah so that needs to go up and let's drag this down to here and also this one down to here they're in different resolutions at the moment so I need to address that uh, so yeah this is in 720 which it should be in 1080 but because I was gaming on it you sometimes get a better performance by using a lower desktop resolution so let's keep those changes and let's just drag them all over a bit tidier pretty central should be fine so three two and one let's hit apply and I'll show you the whole picture so you can see what happens so if I am on this monitor and I drag this over to the right, you can see it's on this display and back over. But also if I drag it upwards, it goes onto the TV up here. Now, obviously you can only see half of my TV at the moment, but that actually works all right. Um, if I was to get something like a web browser up uh, and say it had, I don't know, something like weather, So you can see here, Barnstable. If I just want this top part, that's fine. I can drag that up to the top and I can use it up here. I can pin it, there you go. And that's gonna stay on my screen, but it still means that I can use the rest of the computer as I want. So if I wanted to call up uh, you know, my files, Let's pop them over on the right hand screen and as you can see it's not it doesn't feel sluggish at all I mean I've been using this uh, for a week now and I've been really really impressed by the performance of it so this is the Windows Store which on some devices can be a bit sluggish but it's been absolutely fine on this uh, if I call up the Epic Games launcher you can see that that's coming up and that's fine right I'm going to switch back over to one monitor and test some games and some emulation so first up, let's try a bit of Minecraft. This is installed from the Windows Store. Still running the desktop resolution at 1080 at this stage because I don't need to run it any lower with Minecraft. I'm using a Bluetooth controller and also a Bluetooth speaker for sound. And as you can see, it loads up pretty quick. Wow, lava already. <laughs> And yeah, it's not struggling with that. I can run around, uh, I can look around the environment. In fact, let's try and get somewhere where we can see a bit further. There's loads of animals and things in here now. There's, there's all sorts have been added all the time. You can see the village here, look. But yeah, not, not struggling with that at all. So let's quit out of that and try a bit of emulation. So I've got, uh, what I've tried to do is uh, try more recent emulation rather than I mean, obviously, things like PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 2 is fine, GameCube is fine. It's the newer systems and also the harder to emulate, so things like Xbox and PlayStation 3 that uh, I think will be a real test for this. I've done more emulation on previous processors in this sort of range, so like the J4125 and uh, the 5095 and the 5105. So let's do a bit of GTA San Andreas which is one of the easier to run PlayStation 3 games because this is a port, uh, like an improved version for PS3. Um, and obviously some games will work well, some games won't. Let's go full screen. I'm not sure if I tried this with the resolution set to 1080, so I might drop it down to 720 in a minute. So let's go straight in. Here we go, so as we look around, it's looking pretty smooth. And have a little cycle around. Oh, there's a faster bike, look. And a police officer, so we'll get a chase straight away, look. Oh, he missed it. No, he did see it. 
You can see the train here as well. Get that in the way of me and the police officer, that might help. Oh, okay. Was it a train? Was it a tram? No, it was a train. Where's he gone? Here he is, look. Is he still chasing me? He is. Whoop. <laughs> I'm really giving him the runaround. So as you can see, really, really coping well with that PS3 emulation on this particular game. Obviously, as I said, some games run much better than others. Across a steep hill. So I couldn't get Grand Slam Tennis to run and uh, Dirt Showdown ran, but was really quite laggy. It even doesn't work very well on my M1 MacBook, which is a 900 pound laptop. So Xbox, this is the original Xbox. And again, some games worked uh, well and some weren't as fast as others. But Jet Set Radio ran pretty well actually. And again, I'm trying this with a 1080 desktop. I haven't altered it to try and improve the performance. And if we move around, you can see that it seems to be coping pretty well with that. It feels nice to play, 59, 60 FPS. Well, it didn't work so well. There you go. But let's try a bit of Outrun just to show you what it's like. And what does it say, 26, 28 FPS? I think it's probably supposed to be 30, because it does feel reasonable but it is it's not perfect so it's definitely going to depend on the games with the more advanced emulation yeah it should be smoother than this um, as you can see it does look pretty fast but it is dropping some frames but if you pick the right games then you're going to get a better experience or if you drop down to older emulators as I say PS2 GameCube uh, then you're going to be much much better off with that so if I open up Steam and the thing is, when you look at games and when you look at what they recommend you run on different systems, they generally will always talk about a graphics card. Well, this hasn't got, this has got integrated GPUs, so the, the graphics are built into the processor. So you can't really tell if it's going to work or not, but some games run great, and Dirt Rally is one of them. And while I'm doing this, it's certainly not noisy at all. So the fan is running, but I can barely hear it. Look how crisp that looks. It really does look great. Look, all the detail of the drivers and everything in the car. It's really difficult though. The Mini's handling is not good on this ground. And it's very unforgiving because obviously, as you can see, there's quite a drop either side. But what have we got? 28 FPS. Definitely... <laughs> Oh, it definitely feels like it's not dropping frames. Oh, that was terrible. Let's go back a bit. Let's get moving again. Watch out for that rock. So yeah, desktop resolution running at 1080. I uh, haven't played around with any of the settings to try and make things run better. Uh, be better if I didn't drive into some of the hedges and things. But look at that. Look at that draw distance. That That really is... A lovely view. So if I quit out of that, and I think that's the only one I ran on Steam. A lot of my games are older on Steam, uh, which would be more suited to this device. Uh, but I've got some newer games on the Epic Games Launcher, and I tried Assassin's Creed, which I actually played for a while uh, and quite enjoyed it, although uh, it's definitely not full speed. In fact, I am going to drop the resolution down for this. So display settings... And 720. So I'm not sure where this is going to put me. I was trying to get to the top of a building before. And let's see if it lets me get back to that bit. Okay, so let's do a bit of climbing. You can see 14, 15 FPS. Not great. But I was I was enjoying it. It was it was playable and uh, Yeah, I was I was actually enjoying playing the game. So you can see here, and this, you know, it's quite a full-on environment. It does look very, very nice. Uh, all the settings are very low, um, but I really wasn't expecting this to run. Where do we go from here? Jump over to there. Oh, yeah. I do like this system that you run around with on this game. But obviously there's a lot of, um, a lot of characters in that. Look, all this it has to take into account. So, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit ambitious. Can I go up here? Am I going to run? 
No, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to run down there. What would he jump to? That bit? Oh. You'd think the crowd would be looking at me saying, what's he doing? Can I go up? Swing up? Yeah, so it's playable, but um, obviously you definitely want it to be faster. Than, oh, no, I can't jump up there. I was thinking that you can see there's all these spikes which are here, and I can't seem to jump around those. But I can sort of shimmy along the building and drop down onto the roof. Let's see if Tomb Raider runs better. Certainly looks great. I know, but I have a good feeling about this. So we go with graphics. Oh look, we're on a high preset. Yeah, still looks pretty decent. 20 FPS. Um, it was definitely dropping lower and going a bit higher at different times uh, on the snowy bit. Obviously the effect is because she's got some sort of heat stroke, that's why it looks all blurry. Again, still playable. Oh. Can I get up there? No, it's a bit too overhanging, I think. That's about that. I've changed the resolution back to 1080 and let's try a bit of cloud gaming with Xbox. Yeah, game streaming definitely working well. It's looking really nice and it's really responsive. Graphics are decent. I guess I've got to run up this thing. And let's go back and fours are five. And again, cloud play. Yep, that looks pretty good and it feels nice and responsive. Lovely and fast. Weaving in and out. So it talks about 8K in the description. So let's try some YouTube at 8K. I've not tried YouTube at 8K before. I've only ever gone up to 4K. So let's see what it does. You can see the browser is pretty snappy. So 8K. And let's pick something this will do. Okay, what's it defaulted to 4K? But here's 8K, and it didn't it didn't struggle to start it showing. Uh, so stats for nerds. So it started off by dropping a few frames. So out of 1500, it's dropped about 25 frames. It does look fine though. Uh, it's it's a very small amount of frame drop, uh, but to be able to play 8K at 24 FPS, that's pretty impressive. I I wasn't expecting that. And that does look good. I also have an 8K file on here as well. Uh, just a local file which should be even easier to play. Uh, so videos, this Morocco one. And let's just show you how responsive it is moving around it. So obviously I've clicked, what, 23 seconds into it. And you can see that does look lovely and smooth. Really crisp, yeah? Video performance, very impressive. Really nice detail. So let's go through the specs on their site. So Geekom Mini Air 12. Here we are. And it's this one. And I've put some uh, codes in if you want to save some money on it so it'll get a little bit of money off. So 12th Gen N100 processor, 16 gig of DDR5, 4800 RAM. The SSD in mine was an NVMe 512, uh, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. And as I showed earlier on, supports three monitors. It says up to 8K. It really is impressive how these energy efficient Intel processors are just getting better every year. So it's quite a bit faster than the 5095, which I thought was quite a decent entry level processor. Um, so they are definitely taking these entry level devices seriously. Okay, so thanks to Geekon for sending me this to test. I've definitely enjoyed it. It's a really impressive device. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.